again and welcome back to our how-to videos with Hippo Showers. Today we're going to learn about how to turn your shower on for the first time. First of all, we're going to turn the gas on. It very clearly says on the top of there, open and close, and we're going to turn it to open. Now sometimes you hear a bit of a noise as you open it, that's fine and perfectly normal. However, if there's a continuous hissing sound, or you can smell gas, or you're worried, then it's worth stopping and just checking your regulator is properly attached. Now because I've turned the water on, this hose is now filling with water. I'm not sure if you can see, it's a wooden rose bush. The hose that was little and short is now getting much, much, much longer and expanding. It's filling with water and yet still the boiler is not on. So now our hose is full of water, water has run through the unit, we're going to turn the unit on. There's a little button underneath here that's on off and I'm clicking it on to on. Now you may notice that nothing has happened. So we get a lot of phone calls from people who say, I've turned my shower on and nothing has happened. Dead as a dodo. That is because there is a very, very, very special and very important safety feature on our boilers. And what it means is the boiler itself does not ignite or turn on or do anything unless there is water running through the system. So the way to make the boiler turn on is to run water through the system. And the way to run water through the system is to turn this hose on. Nothing will happen to your boiler until the water is coming out of the hose. And that's a safety feature and a very important safety feature. So if you're watching this now, as I turn it on, you're gonna hear a little click and that's the gas igniting and then the temperature display will light up and we'll see how hot it is. So I'm gonna turn this on. Click and it's ignited. So now there's water running through the system. The boiler is on, it's come up to 25, 20, it's currently at 34 degrees. That's a little bit too hot, so we're gonna turn it down. So we're now washing at 32 degrees, which is a good temperature to wash at. If you want to turn it up, we can turn it up. I'm just going to turn this off so that we can hear. So this water, the boiler stays on as the hose fills because there's still currently water running through the system. As soon as this expanding hose is filled, like that, it turns off. Now the temperature display here tells you the temperature of the water that's going through the system at the time. It doesn't necessarily correlate to the temperature of the water coming out of the end of the hose. Remember that, because it might be that you've made a significant temperature change in the time it's taken for the water to get from here to here. So don't always go by that. Obviously check for the water coming out of the end isn't too hot before you use it on your horse. Uh, the other thing to remember is not to, not to turn this in massive turns because some people get overexcited. They're like, yeah, I want hot water. They turn it right up. Ow, it's burning. Oh my God, it's too hot. Turn it right down. Oh my God, it's too cold. Up, oh, it's too hot. Down, oh, it's too cold. You want to do it in quite small motions and you need to wait a few seconds. So it depends on how long it takes, how much water pressure and how much water flow you have. Depends, makes it vary on how much water goes through your hose and how quickly. But basically, you need to wait long enough for the water to run through your hose to see the temperature change. And then if it's not enough, you can tweak it again a little bit more. A lot of people ring us up and they say, you know, how should I have my settings? But it varies on so many different levels. The temperature of the water going into the boiler, the amount of water going into the boiler, so the amount of flow that you have. So some people have a huge amount of water flow and also the amount of pressure. So a lot of people have like low pressure or some people have high pressure and the pressure is the, the, the pressure at which it comes out of the tap. So all of those things have a variation on how much you need to twiddle your knobs, basically. So this top knob here, which says winter, summer. Basically what that does is there's four rows of burners within the boiler. On winter, all four are lit and on summer, only three are lit. So it means that winter setting is very good for anyone that has quite a high level of water running through their system. It's also very good when the water is colder, hence it's called winter. So when the water when you've got more water or the water needs a little bit more heating, winter is a good setting. If you've only got a little piddly flow of water and it's quite a warm day, then you might prefer the summer heating. This flame control here does what it says in the tin. That, just, that changes the size of the flame. So up here, is a big flame, down there is a small flame. And temperature control is actually more of a water control. So it just it determines how much water is running through. So some people like to use this quite high up and have the water control quite high up and then change the temperature with the size of the flame. It all depends on how much water you've got coming in and how much water you want going out. 
So the best thing to do actually is trial and error. Try it on your yard, see how it goes. You'll find very quickly that you work out what settings work best for you. So if you're someone that doesn't have a particularly good water flow at your yard, then the best setting for you would be to have the flame slightly higher and the temperature control slightly lower. That is because this here actually is a water control rather than a temperature control and what it does is it restricts the flow of water going through. So the higher you have it, the more restriction of water there is because it holds it in the boiler for longer to make it heat up more. So if you want to try and get as much water out of the end as you can, you want to restrict it as little as you can, in which case have it on winter and have that up high. And that will give you a slightly higher amount of water coming out of the end of the hose. Your shower cannot make any more water than is going into the unit. However, these expanding hoses can be very, very good at helping the pressure. So at the moment, this hose is full and I'm going to get my camera girl to look at the hose. So this hose is now currently full. So we're going to turn the tap off and we are going to empty out this hose. So you can see that when I put the shower on, this water coming out of here is just coming out of the hose. It's not coming out of the tap, it's as the hose restricts and contracts, it sucks all the water out and it pushes all of that water out. Can we see that? So all of that spray there and that pressure there came purely from the hose contracting. So that contraction of the hose created that little bit of pressure. So if you are on a yard that has quite a low flow or quite a low pressure, if when you're washing your horse, you take your hand off and you turn the hose off temporarily and let the hose refill, when you go to put your hand back on it again, you'll have the water coming from your tap, but it will be added to the water that's already in the hose. And it won't be a huge difference, but it'll be enough to give you a little bit extra. It's also very good if you're on a yard that someone else flushes a toilet or turns another tap on and there's a bit of a fluctuation of the water pressure, this hose can act like it's a bit of a buffer. That's one of the many reasons why these hoses are incredible. And please don't be fooled into thinking this is a normal expandable hose. It really isn't. They are magical. They've got special latex. They've got three layers of it and they are designed in such a way that they really do. This foot hose that is on the shower is a 25 foot hose. The showers come with a 25 foot hose as standard, but you can upgrade them to a 50 foot or 100 foot versions. Again, the 50 foot and 100 foot versions hold more water and therefore have more contraction, so therefore can add a little bit more extra pressure as well. But for the standard, they come with a 25 foot hose. For people with a portable shower and people that have a wash bay, or people that have a boom as well, these 25 foot versions are perfectly adequate normally. But if you did want something extra length, then make sure on your order that you tick that you want the 50 foot or the 100 foot. If you get the 25 foot and you decide in future you want another extension, you can put extensions on them, it is possible. So that was our video about how to use your hippo shower for the first time. Next, we're gonna be doing a video about fault finding and how to see if your hippo has a problem or is poorly. Thank you once again for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope that you're subscribed to our channel and you've popped us a like down below and maybe even a comment with some feedback. It's been lovely speaking to you and I'll see you soon.